Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Fagum Radian here at the Excel Center in London where we're covering the DSCI Trade Show, one of the world's largest air, land, sea, cyber, and security expositions. Our coverage here is in partnership with DSCI and Clarion Events, and we have with us Mark Signorelli, who's the Vice President for Strategy and Business Development and in the BAE Systems Platforms and Services business. Very small portfolio, Mark. Just just a few things that we, uh, that we do. Uh, and as you went through that list of things that are covered here, airspace, cyber, sea, uh, all of those fit our portfolio, but uh, but I think if you looked around the stand today, you'd see that we've uh, we've highlighted a lot of our land portfolio this year. And right, and and that's what I want, where I wanted to start because you also uh, were the naval guns uh, guy for uh, BAE Systems, so would like to talk to you that as a as a former Army guy. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, that's right. you know about guns. Uh, so talk to us a little bit about the CB90, long-standing part of the company's portfolio. You guys have been steadily upgrading that. I know that you've got uh, you know the uh, the the newer version of the. Uh, I, I I keep saying thinking of it as a BB206, but it's the BB2. BBS10. BBS10. So. Let's start with the CV90, what you guys have done new, and what kind of export opportunities do you see there? Yeah, so, so CV90 is one of those great platforms. It's got great bones, great DNA, uh, and it re really is a, a solid platform that lets us adapt uh, the basic vehicle to the needs of a wide range of customers. So we, we have a, a large installed base, uh, we've done significant efforts to modernize that base across a number of customers, most recently in Norway, where there's now a CV90 family of vehicles. Uh, and, uh, and as we look at other new customers uh, in Eastern Europe, uh, and, uh, and potentially for Land 400 Phase 3 in Australia. Uh, and so we've really taken solid platform, great capabilities, uh, and continue to evolve it. And I think that's a model that we see for most of the major combat platforms today. Uh, instead of a new start, you know, what can I do to enhance the capability, build on, and, and I think it really goes to one of our corporate strengths, which is technology integration. And, uh, and so that's what you see here, and, and we've all, we continue to have uh, new combat stations, uh, new weapons that we've added, uh, a missile system, that, which has not been a traditional piece of CV-90. Uh, so. and, and, and just for folks who don't know the CB90, uh, it's an armored vehicle, but it also has a squad capacity in the back of the vehicle. Um, so it allows you to serve as that armored personnel carrier, but also fighting vehicle. That's correct. So it, uh, it is an IFE armored personnel carrier and, uh, uh, and great utility and, and adaptable to a number of roles. And that's why it can be a family of vehicles as well. And, and, and a very, very nice uh, ground footprint for places where you can't really have a heavy vehicle. It's, uh, it's in that sort of light, medium weight class. And, uh, and with band track, uh, even enhances the mobility even more. And, uh, and the, uh, the crews uh, probably like that better than breaking normal track. Uh, they do. Well, first of all, it doesn't break like normal track does. Uh, but it is, uh, in spite of a lot of urban myths, uh, it's pretty easy to uh, take the track off, replace it if you do have an incident, and the ride quality is infinitely better than what we've had. And, and talk to us a little bit about the gun and the sighting system you guys have. Yeah, so uh, so on here we've got the 30 millimeter. Uh, we've got a range of, uh, of applications, 30, 35, 40. Uh, we've done a prototype with a 120 millimeter cannon uh, turret. Uh, and so again, that, that, that mature, robust architecture lets you adapt that, uh, uh, that capability. And, and we've now uh, started to integrate a next generation of, uh, of uh, sensors and sights on here to kind of uh, exploit the capabilities of the larger caliber cannons. Let's talk about the BVS-10, um, another uh, uh, long part of the uh, Haglund's portfolio, which BAE acquired over now almost 20 years ago. But um, talk to us a little bit about how you've updated that vehicle and the market for that um, as well worldwide, because it's it's a unique vehicle in the articulated sort of two-part, uh, but you know it's a hoot to drive. I mean, I remember of all the things I've driven, it was probably the most fun thing I've ever driven. It, it, it's a, it, so if you get the chance, and you obviously have to drive, it is, a, it is a, something like you've never done before. But BVS BVS-10, sort of an extension of the franchise we started with the BV-206, uh, which is, there's tens of thousands of BV-206s around the world, uh, unarmored vehicle for the BV-206. BVS-10, armored as a medium weight, uh, all-terrain vehicle, uh, interestingly enough, fully amphibious, uh, so it, it's a swimmer, uh, as well as an all-terrain vehicle. 
Uh, and we've again adapted that to a family of vehicles, uh, motor carriers, uh, medical evacuation vehicles, uh, so a range of capabilities. And then we've also sort of gone back to our roots with the latest incarnation, which is Beowulf, which is an unarmored version of the BV-206, I'm sorry, BVS-10. Right. Uh, for uh, more humanitarian aid kind of applications, uh, also potentially for commercial applications. Uh, so, uh, so it's, again, a robust platform that's very flexible. Mm -hmm.